What's up everyone, it's Oliver. Today I'm gonna be reviewing this video that I found while searching on YouTube. I honestly didn't really know what to make today's video about, so I figured I would just look up some stuff. Yeah, let's take a look at it. <clears throat> Grab the headphones and let's begin. So this is our 3D stereolithographic 3D printer and we're able to build physical models of digital uh, of digital models that we've created. Essentially Stereolithographic. There's printer. UV curable resin uh, that we trace a laser over the cross section of the part and it turns that uh, that liquid into a solid. That's pretty damn cool. All right, let's look up what a stereolithographic 3D printer is because I've never heard of that. Okay, so as the guy said in the video, from what I understand from this Wikipedia page, is that stereolithography is basically just like a 3D printing process and you focus an ultraviolet laser on a vat of photopolymer resin. Presumably, oh, there you go, light-activated resin. So, um, kind of like the stuff that they would use if you went to the dentist, I'm assuming. I don't know why, but these, um, this orange, these orange side panels right here. So this obviously protects from the UV lights so that, like, you don't, you know, ruin your eyes or anything or get burned. Um... But yeah, that's pretty cool. So you basically have this like, from what I understand, this like liquid resin and you direct a beam on it, a beam of UV light in a certain manner and create stronger polymers and plastics until, you know, you have your 3D model, which is pretty cool. So this is a self-leveling uh, tripod. Okay, off the bat, self-leveling tripod seems pretty sweet. I want one. <laughs> Um, originally, we wanted to apply it towards nature photography with uneven ground. Um, it would level itself so you don't have to go through all the manpower. Basically, over here, there's an on-off switch and uh, up and down, so you can move it up and it'll level. You can move it down. And okay, <laughs> this seems over-engineered like crazy. <laughs> like... People have been making tripods for a long time now. This seems incredibly over-engineered, but also incredibly cool. I want it. <laughs> and um, you can uh, move the uh, legs anywhere you want, and it'll just level itself. Whoa. There's just three linear <laughs> actuators and a accelerometer that checks the tilt values, and it'll... Sometimes I question what I'm actually learning in school because I feel like I would be able to build this. It would just be really freaking hard. I guess that's why you work with professors when you're doing like your capstones or, sh or whatever. This is Connect 4. The idea is to uh, use mechatronics to interface with a, like a real life board game so that people can nice. interact. All right, this is pretty cool, but also Again, over-engineered. Like, why, why would anyone want to do this? <laughs> I mean, can't you just play Connect 4 normally? I guess, like, I guess it's kind of cool that you can beat the computer, but software engineering, you know? You just, like, get the computer to to do this. I mean, I, I guess I guess her whole point is, like, oh, it's a real-life board game, but this I don't, I don't see the utility. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a cool, like, it's a cool game idea but I, I don't know I, I don't really I don't really see how this is gonna you know be that useful and honestly I probably shouldn't be this hard on this person because who knows what I'm gonna build it might be equally <laughs> equally as strange as this but um yeah hopefully I'll build something useful in my final year that would be nice this is the delta droid the oh idea my behind god. it is that we oh my god okay let's try to guess what they're doing here I have no idea um building cookies <laughs> What is there? Why is there a chocolate chip cookie? What could possibly what, what could they possibly be doing with this? Oh, oh, oh no! I see these tubes down here, and I see some sprayage over here. Oh, is it a machine that like ices like a cookie or a cake for you? That's kind of cool, but also kind of ridiculously over-engineered. Who would use this? I don't understand the target market. I feel like a lot of okay. Engineering is cool, and it's cool that you can do stuff like this, but there's no marketability for these things. Like, I'm, I'm looking at this from, like, a business perspective. I don't know anybody that would want to buy this or anything similar to it, but maybe I'm just naive. I mean, I guess you could use it on, like, an industrial manufacturing plant. Then maybe you might have a customer. 
So, okay, fine, fine. But I was thinking as like an independent person, like as a consumer product, this makes no sense. But maybe they're thinking bigger, you know? Engineers do usually think corporate, so there you go. I just went a full 180 on this and I do like this product now. <laughs> in all three degrees of motion and keep up with your hand as it's moving on a computer just as quickly and as agile as you want it. And from that we decided what can we do that's interesting. So we decided to add on an extruding stage with frosting so then you can put a cookie in there and you can extrude frosting and draw it. Okay so interesting concept but if you could automate this ooh, then you have some customers. Um, I guess you could also take this to like a fair, like, like, like a kid's fair, but that won't make you much money. Like you won't make much money off of it at being like a gimmick, I don't think. But if you could sell this to someone, yeah, that's a good product. So this is Fido. All right. Officially already love Fido. My man with the mustache is vibing. I love, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Fido is a spherical robot, and right now he rolls and is controlled based off of this controller. It's basically like a joystick. Any way that you turn the joystick is where Fido will go. Oh, the special nice. thing about Fido is he's self-balancing, so that if he had a... Nice. Okay, this is cool. I always, I've always liked this kind of thing, like making these robots like this. This is cool. This, There are a lot of applications I can see for this. If you add like more um, sensors, cameras, yada, yada. Boom, you have military application for this thing. You have freaking make your own personal surveillance robots around your house or something. <laughs> I don't know, this is cool. There's a conveyor belt here, which I guess helps it balance from side to side. I'm sure that like some of these counterweights probably move, um, which is pretty cool. I don't know, I like it. I like this product. A spherical robot that didn't have self-balancing, it wouldn't be able to roll because it would just always be falling over to one side. <laughs> so what we've done here is we put in a weight carriage that is it's on a closed loop basically so that it itself knows how to balance itself so that all you have to worry about is setting the robot where you want to go mobile hotspot you can put your cell phone in it, <laughs> oh it God, go I get your it. coffee for you you could just put you know okay it could go get your coffee for you but how is it going to carry it it doesn't have arms <laughs> and like come on the military would buy this in like a minute you got to sell it to them i love what they made but i think the direction she was going with it with the product i don't think they quite figured out the, the the their target audience for the product either i'm not a professional but there is a lot of utility in something like that a camera gimbal that tracks a color um, in three-dimensional space um, so our subject oh, nice. wearing a blue shirt it's able to follow him up and down left and right as he uh, moves around in space and yeah, I mean I could see how there would be like applications here So we got a little motor got a another uh, Microcontroller, I feel like something like this already exists like this kind of gimbal style uh, But doing the software the like vision control is probably the harder part the motor control board which then angles the GoPro as it needs to to follow him so if we detach it it also <laughs> wait, okay I'm not sure if I'm understanding this properly, but there's a GoPro <laughs> in order to track the person. It is, and there's a camera in order to record the person. Why don't, why don't you just use the GoPro? What's the point of sticking the camera in there? Or maybe they're using the camera to connect it to the Arduino and then the GoPro is the thing recording. Whatever it is, is, is there not a way to do two things at once i mean maybe there isn't but i would i mean i feel like they probably thought of this and they have some explanation for it but it is kind of funny that you have to have like two cameras to make one camera thing work my group's project we call it project sidewinder because it's a mobile drive platform that's able to both translate wow okay this is officially sweet that's so cool do you see the way this thing moves and rotate and we accomplish this by having and they're using a PlayStation controller. Man. <laughs> Three independently controlled modules. So each one of these modules can rotate and power the wheel um, uh, separately from each other. And what this allows us to do is both translate and rotate at the same time. And this. That's cool. All right. So they have a chain up here. And I'm assuming three different motors go like this up and down, basically just like Bluetooth or over the internet or whatever, um, sending the signal to this to tell each of these separate motors what to do. 
this is cool. This is a sweet project. I don't know what it is, but the way it moves is just like is so satisfying to watch. This is different from traditional drive uh, drive platforms like cars because cars need to move forward and backwards wow. in order to turn. And what this allows us to do is both turn or translate and move basically in any direction at once. Uh, that's honestly a great use of this of the PlayStation controller because you have two joysticks, so you can have one for like translation and one for motion, which is sweet. All right, uh, the ping pong paddle. Um, I don't really know what's going on here. Oh, we got a drone. As we got a drone see, right here, and the Android phone has an Android app on it that essentially is able to track the X and Y coordinates and then feed that information to the quadcopter. Oh, nice. And based on that, the quadcopter is able to turn <laughs> left or right in order for the object to be centered back into the center of the phone. So applications involve general surveillance as well as security. Since it's able to track uh, any type of object, um, it has a wide variety of applications. But that's pretty cool. They really should have just figured out a way to like make this thing wireless, like wirelessly connect to their device. Like I'm sure there's a way to do it. Like, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LTE, whatever. Um, yeah, but otherwise pretty cool, pretty cool product. <laughs> nice demo. Um, drones are always very cool. Love to see it. Well, that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed some of these uh, mechatronic design videos. I found them pretty cool and I might steal a few of these later to when I want to build something myself. Um, so yeah, if you're thinking about mechatronics, here are some things that you might build in a design course or in your final capstone course, whatever it is. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.